Hey folks, I want to show you how you can use Jupyter Notebooks and .NET together using the new Polyglot Notebooks uh, extension for Visual Studio Code. Now, this extension has been around for a little bit under the name of .NET Interactive, but in November of 2022, um, Microsoft rebranded it to Polyglot uh, uh, Notebooks just because it supports so many languages. You're going to see what I mean when I show you here. So if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, that's okay. Uh, you'll kind of get the drift here. I'm not going to go over installing it in this, but I do have an article on that if you check the description of this video. Now, uh, here I am in Visual Studio Code, and I have a number of extensions installed, uh, including uh, both Jupyter Notebooks and the maybe more critical one, uh, Polyglot uh, Notebooks. Okay. So here's Polyglot Notebooks. It's currently in preview as of the time of this recording. It's fairly effective. I like it a lot. Um, and the way that you work with it is once you've installed this extension, once you've installed Jupyter Notebooks on your machine, you, this really is actually just a kernel for Jupyter. So it plugs into the existing Jupyter install and it just lets you run Jupyter Notebooks using more languages such as C Sharp, F Sharp, uh, even HTML, CSS, not CSS, SQL, uh, <laughs> other languages. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's, hence the name Polyglot. It's not just .NET anymore. Uh, but let's take a look at how this runs. Okay, so I'm going to open up the command palette by doing control shift P on Windows. That's probably command shift P on, on, on uh, a Mac. Uh, but in here, I'm going to type in polyglot notebook and notice I get a number of things. But I'm going to choose to create a new blank notebook. Okay? And when you do that, it asks you, hey, do you want to create this as a .dib or an IPy notebook? Um, I typically work with the, these IPy notebooks from Jupyter Notebooks. So I choose that one um, and then it asks you for your default language. Uh, I like C Sharp, so I'm going to do C Sharp, but you know, there's a number of languages you can choose to use. So you can change your language over here to C Sharp, F Sharp, HTML, JavaScript, Custo Query Language or KQL, Mermaid, which is really marked down for diagrams, pretty cool, PowerShell, SQL, and I'm, I haven't actually looked at value storage. Um, notably absent here is VB, you know, formerly called VB.net. Uh, so we have .NET languages, just not VB. So let's take a look at what this is and what we can do with it. Now, the first thing we can do here is we can actually go in and we can run C Sharp code. So I can say uh, int num burritos to buy, hope you're not hungry, is five. And I can say decimal price per burrito is $3.80 uh, decimal. Decimals we end with an M. Um, and I can click play to run this, or I can hit control enter both work. And that's a cell, it's a cell, cell of code. I can also have, have cells of markdown. So I can put in markdown here. This is a header in markdown with some paragraph. That's gonna be very, um, uh, very familiar to anybody who's worked with Jupyter Notebook's very same concept. So here's the cool thing about this is that these, these variables are available between cells. So now I can add a new code cell and I can say decimal uh, total for lunch is equal to num burritos to buy. And notice how I get my IntelliSense, I like that, times price per burrito. And if I wanted to, I could do console uh, right line total for lunch. That's actually not the most ideal way of doing this, but we see here it's actually $19. And if I decide I want a different number of burritos or you know, maybe burritos cost a little bit more, let's say burritos now cost nine cents extra, I can rerun the cell. And now I can rerun this cell as well. I get a different value, okay? Uh, so pretty cool. Now, Jupyter Notebooks uh, has this kind of cool feature where the last, if you end a cell, a code cell with a, a variable as the last thing, and you run it, it's just displayed automatically. So we didn't even actually need to console right line that. So that's pretty neat. Uh, but there's some other neat things going on here. So let's add a class. So I'm gonna ha say, hey, public class um, student. I'm gonna give this, oh, <laughs> uh, didn't need to move on to another cell. I think shift uh, enter is probably what did that for me. Um, and I'm gonna give it a public uh, string name get set and I might say public uh, decimal GPA get set 
Okay. So now I have a class, and I can actually define that class. But I can create a new student. I'll say student mat equals new using my implicit new or target type new here. Um, and I'll use my curly boys, create a new one. <sighs> There's the shift enter for you again uh, with a name of Matt and a GPA of, not to brag, I guess my, my GPA is currently 4.0 uh, as a master's student. Um, but if I run this, well, I'm going to have a new variable, Matt. And if I have it, this is my last, uh, last uh, variable in a cell, just on a line of its own without a semicolon at the end, that's actually important. It actually prints out all the properties of the object right here. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I can do I can do that here if I if I need to. Now, if I wanted to have a list, uh, I can I can do that as well. I can say I can add a using system collections generic. I actually don't need this this using, but I tend to do it anyway. Polyglot Notebook seems to have this this as an, the kind of an automatically imported uh, namespace. But I can say list of student students equals new list. And let's say I'm going to add Matt to that list. And I might add, also add another another student here. So I'd say students dot add um, new student. And I'm going to call the student's name. It's going to be Jimothy, which is a fantastic name, with a GPA of negative 7. Jimothy's not doing so well. Um, and now if I choose to have my list as my last uh, object here in my cell, now I get to see all of my students in there. So very cool stuff. This is really handy for if you wanted to mix together uh, code and markdown, um, maybe just play around with some objects, play around with your public API or public API you're, you're, you're in investigating. Uh, it can do this. Um, if you wanted to document your, your application and share it with other people on your team or other people on the internet for like a public source, uh, open source uh, library, you could do that as well. Um, we can mix together documentation in Markdown and also, you know, C Sharp or F Sharp or what other languages that we wanted to. Now, a couple of key tricks before we close. Uh, variables, you can always take a look at what variables are in memory for your server uh, by clicking on variables and that will let you see them. That doesn't seem to be populating for me here. So that's Matt tempting the demo gods, I suppose. But if I run all my cells, yep, okay, there we are. So now they, they populate. So if you can always rerun your cells. You can run cells in any order. You can repeatedly run cells as many times as you want. And you can also just click on variables to see all of your variables that you have. Now, it is possible to use a C-sharp variable in an F-sharp uh, cell or vice versa. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do, including installing NuGet packages, but I want to just kind of keep it simple as far as what we can do with Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, sorry, Polyglot Notebooks, uh, which lets you do .NET uh, development and other languages inside of uh, a Jupyter Notebook environment. So uh, take a look at my article. If you have any more questions, leave a comment. I'm happy to answer them. Um, I think this is really exciting. I'm particularly loving this for working with ML.NET and data science experiments there. So expect some more content from me on that area, but thanks for watching and let me know what you think.